Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Today's session is going to be about the things we carry upon ourselves. Well, this is Lisa Bubari, and uh, it's time for Heal Talk Tuesdays, which is a time that we come uh, for informative, uh, educational, sometimes uh, inspirational, and quotes for affirmations so you can use for yourself. And welcome to all of you who are here and are coming on. I posted something on my uh, general Facebook uh, yesterday asking if you know of anyone who is going through uh, that has children that are going through anxiety and that they are overweight and have a lot of fears. Well, I've gotten about um, 11 different uh, messages and I also received two emails to uh, respond to them and I will pick one of those emails and respond to it. And one of them was quite profound because it was about uh, this lady that was talking about her 11-year-old boy. And so I will get back to that. And in the meantime, if you have uh, anything that you would like me to bring up and talk about it, either about yourself, about fears and phobias and weight, and that I can help you reduce it, I can do this today. Today is August, um, and what they say is, I don't know, have you been feeling a little bit sluggish lately? Uh, I'm not into astrology at all. I'm more of a uh, science and art, but uh, a friend of mine was telling me to check and say, uh, see about what's going on universally, and there is a lot of people who are feeling sluggish uh, in a daze, fog, uh, pains in their body that normally is not there. Apparently, uh, something in the universe is pulling and pushing, and it's time of struggle. And apparently, tomorrow is the time that it's coming into an openness. So that's why I'm wondering if you feel any different. In my life, I go through this part and every time I feel down, I give myself time to breathe. And actually I had someone call me and ask me if you, what is the difference between meditation and hypnosis? And uh, actually not much. The difference between hypnosis and meditation is we both start with concentrating on our breath. Inhaling positiveness, oxygen, vitality, and exhaling, releasing and letting go negativity uh, and stress, stress within ourselves. So when we bring ourselves to the moment of quietness and calmness, the beginning of any meditation, any prayer, is to quiet ourselves, to quiet our mind down. And of course, when we want to go into that tranquil place, even when we are praying in church, we are praying anytime, when we go into that prayer position, there's so much stuff in our mind that keeps coming and going, and our mind never stops thinking. But how to quiet it is to bring that focus and concentration back to your breath and breathe in, and only listen to the sound of your breath coming through your nostrils. And then you hold it. You hold for just a few seconds. Do it together. One, two, three, four, and very gently release. Really 
And as you concentrate only on the sound of your breath, as you exhale, in a way, it's like a sound of the ocean that comes to shore, the water, the waves that come to shore. If you have been to the ocean at any time, even one time, or just listen to the sound of waves coming to shore, that in itself is the most relaxing thing that there is. You see, a long time ago, I learned as, as when we do guided visualization for people, there are so many who guide their clients to a place of safety in their bedroom, or they guide them down the staircase. And when we do group sessions, there are so many who say, now just imagine being in an elevator. And there are some who say, just imagine being near the ocean and the waves. Approximately 14 years ago, when I got my certification as a domestic abuse consultant, that's when I learned that we don't take females and have them imagine going to their bedroom. You get the idea why, right? And working with panic and anxiety and so many of my clients coming in with panic and anxiety and stressors, I have also learned never to do a guided visualization that puts them in a box like an elevator. What if they have a fear of elevator or claustrophobia? What if they have fallen down their stairs and I am guiding them down the stairs? And it's not necessarily the adult that has the fear, right? It's that little girl or little boy that has created this fear that as an adult, what happens is those little things are triggers. And we don't necessarily remember the triggers, but when the triggers happen, we automatically revert back to that little girl or little boy without understanding or knowing. Does that resonate with you? Do you can you uh, can you understand that? Just show me with a emoji or just say yes and respond. Do you have triggers that sometimes you don't even know where your triggers come from, and you wonder what triggered me because that's that's not where I was. So again, fears, phobias panic attacks, those are all things that hypnotherapy and hypnosis can help much faster than any therapy. Why? Because we delve deep into the subconscious and we open files. How I like to put it is, to make it easy, um, it's like a recipe. Literally, it's a recipe. It's a recipe just like writing a code in the computer and it's been formatted. It's a part of your blueprint. And when there is a building, there's a structure, there is a blueprint that the architect and the engineer have put it together before the house starts being built. Before you even go to the contractor, you go to someone to design your mind's desire of what your house is to look like. What is it that you want this to be? But before even doing that, you have to have a foundation. So if you are building this house, you have to have a lot. Lot is the beginning where we stand. So there's two feelings. There's two core feelings and behaviors. One is love, one is fear. We are not fearful. We are not born fearful, but there is instinctive things that our body does that turns us into that fight or flight. You know, as children, 
we don't know that this is going to burn our finger until we put our finger, that's when we feel, ah, and we scream. But if a child is walking with mom and mom happens to be afraid of a dog and she pulls the child away or she has fear of swimming and does not allow the child to go swimming, even the child has no fear of water, we are training that child to be afraid of water, be afraid of dog, and be afraid of whatever. So word of caution is be aware of your own fears. Is it true? Is it yours? Or have you learned to be afraid? And that's what we work with. We go and open that blueprint and read the blueprint. And if there is a disconnect or it is wrong and it's not fitting to this foundation, we change it, we modify it, we edit it, never deleting it. And then we come up with a new set of blueprint, which is thoughts, ideas, concepts, images that are no longer blocking you, hindering your success or your love. So now, one of the questions, I am reading it right here, is, uh, hi Lisa, I saw your post and I am responding to your, your question. I have a son, 11 years old, that hides food, eats alone, and when we sit at the kitchen together, she, he, he shies away from eating because he believes himself to be fat, so he takes food and hides it. Okay, what can I do with help him sit, sit with us and stop hiding food. I find food under his bed. I find food, uh, chocolates in his drawers. Okay, you get the gist of it. And thank you very much for this question. Okay, so do you know of anyone who is going through things like this? First things first, this little 11 year old, apparently being shy and overweight feels bad enough already to be seating with the family. Now, why would he feel bad is my question. Maybe uh, this is going to be emotional, but my response to her was, may I bring this up? So she apparently she was going to log on and listen to this maybe not live right now, later. We shy away, either in family or with others, because we have been told we are wrong. Excuse me, we do not see ourselves worthy. We do not feel confident. We shy away because self-esteem is lacking and or they have been either bullied or made fun of. So why would I want to be anywhere that I am being made fun of or someone is hurting me, hurting my feelings, not necessarily hurting me, because little kids do not understand uh, a teaser versus a reality. So my question would be, who's teasing or who's been teasing that child? who has empowered that child, who has enabled that child. And we all go through this as children and when we grow up. As we grow up, we get to also add a lot of resentment. And when we become resentful and hurtful, and if we cannot lash back, what we do is lash within. So by hiding food and eating things that are not necessarily good for us, 
we are stuffing a lot of emotions inside. Hmm. So when adults come here for a lot of weight issues, anxiety issues, resentment issues, it's not necessarily for us to deal with the adult at this very moment, it's to understand how we have come to develop this new behavior or old behavior of holding on and packing it in and just stuffing all that emotion inside instead of learning how to eat properly with everyone and have a confident behavior and routine with the people that we love. Remember, most of us that become more emotional and develop triggers are because the triggers were set by the ones who love us first. And then it's other people. So if I were to feel confident about my body or my body image, and if someone were to call me names about my body, it does not affect me as much as if someone I love turns around and says, looks like uh, you gained a few. Really? Are you trying to say I am overweight? So it's, and when they leave, we go into questioning ourselves. And then if we are not confident, we go into self-destructive mode. Oh, maybe I have to go back on diet. Maybe I have to cut this. Maybe I have to do that. It's the negative way of um, doing things, cutting things away from us. And that becomes the destructive point instead of saying, oh, maybe I have gained a few or two and I better watch something the things that I eat, like the ice creams and the cookies and the doughs and all that. So there is a healthy way of looking at things and there is the negative way. So when we go into self-punishment, that's the negative part. But if we go into rewarding ourselves to letting go and doing something beneficial for us, that's the loving part. There is a difference between criticizing someone and critiquing. Criticizing means I am giving you or telling you all the bad things I see. First and foremost, it's their perception and not yours. It may not even be reality. It may be something of their perception and projecting it. Well, how many times have you been in a place in a place and a time that someone has said something and even if it was not true you took it in a negative way right and that became a trigger for you and that trigger was set long time ago but you didn't realize it and you went into self-punishment mode so that's what i'm talking about critique is i'm going to share something that i see that i believe you need to know. Let's say there's something stuck on my tooth. And if it was green, a spinach, blueberry, and if I were to come live over here with you all, I would want someone to say, hey, Lisa, something is stuck on your tooth instead of me continuing for a half an hour. And no one says, but you guys are laughing. And that's okay. Humor is good because I would laugh with you. And that's, that's because that's where I come from. But then it always also says, I am not looking at myself in here to say, ah, oh, I've got something stuck in here. Now, that's a different way of coming and dealing with things that are negative or I have to take a moment and... Exhale. Chill, time out, calm 
myself, them. Before we respond, I wish we could take just a minute of peace. You know, it's like getting to a stop sign and they say count 1001, 1002, 1003, then move. It's incredible. Why is it that we don't do this when we are in a huffy puffy time? And when something something triggers us at that very moment, do that. Use the same method. If you are a driver, it's one of the things that you had to learn to count 1001, 1002, 1003 before you move from that stop sign. And if you have forgotten how to do the stop signs, may this be a reminder. Get to a stop sign. Hi, John. And count 1001, 1002, 1003, and then respond. This is probably one of the best things that we can do for ourselves before we eat, before we speak, before we react, before we move from the stop sign. Just that 1,000, that three second rule can save us from becoming destructive and that second of becoming productive. So, love and fear when there is fear, there's fight, flight, or freeze. Three second pause can give you this moment of um. Let's do this together. Something triggers you, and you go. Um. That was more than three seconds, but you get the gist of it. So when we talk about heal talk, it's the affirmations that you have and that you take pause to reaffirm and reaffirm it lovingly, reaffirm it with intention. I am worthy. I am loving. I am lovable because there is nothing and no one truly that has power over you unless you have given the power. So remember, you matter because you are enough. You are more than enough. As a matter of fact, you are strong enough. You are good enough. You are loving enough. And if you are not, become that. It is your choice. The decision, it's all in one moment. Making that choice to change. If I can be of help for you to shift as I was going to respond to this wonderful mother, I can help that child. But before I do, I will help her make few changes at home with her son, with her own language, and the way she approaches her 11-year-old son, because she is the person he's looking up to. And if she changes few things, he changes few things. They always look up. We always look up to our parents, for the good, for the bad. And we take the best we know it, and sometimes we also respond 
in the negative, that's what we have learned, either at home or somewhere else. But boy, do we bring it home. And it's about how home nurtures it or negates it. With this, I hope this was beneficial. Always remember, your foundation starts with you. The blueprint has been placed there by our caregivers, our parents, our loved ones, from siblings, from teachers, co-workers, even bosses. But what we can do is always change the blueprint. The foundation cannot change because that is who you are. With that, may each and every day be healing and you move forward with better appreciation of who you are, accepting and appreciating all that you are. And the pledge that you make from this day forward, may it be a pledge of allegiance, allegiance to you, to appreciate and accept yourself far more deeply than ever before. And how I help my clients is by evoking what was the past and embracing what is the reality right here, right now, so that you can evolve to what it is that you desire and you dream of and what is it that you want to be. Why? Because you do matter. I also have two spots. If you are local, for our guided visualization that is happening, uh, not visualization, there is going to be guided visualization. We are doing a vision board uh, workshop next Monday evening. If you are local, if you are in the Glendale area, please, by all means, join us. Let me know. Um, and you can always visit my website and see the things that I offer, and I am here to help you. Remember, critique versus criticize, accept and appreciate yourself, and always remember, release it instead of holding on to negativity. I hope this Heal Talk Tuesday was beneficial to you, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Hi, Anita John, how are you? Talk to you soon. Bye, Ruzan. Thank you, Bill. Bye, John. God bless you. May the light from the universe surround you, even though if it's invisible to everybody else's eyes. Talk to you soon.